You have already met our next speaker. Um, he is one of our co-sponsors. In fact, his, uh, his organization uh, has been indispensable to pulling off this uh, important event. Uh, Bob Vanderplatz of the Family Leader Foundation uh, is a, a partner in the effort to engage the people of Iowa in this challenge that we're facing, uh, both uh, from enemies foreign and domestic, and in terms of trying to ensure that uh, those of you living in this really important state, particularly at this moment in time, are engaged uh, not just informed, but actually engaged in trying to do the sorts of things you've been exhorted to do by most of our speakers. Um, I'm delighted to welcome him to talk a little bit about um, his perspective on this phenomenon of Sharia Jihad and the threats we're facing from that quarter. Thank you, Frank. Boy, it's been a thrill to partner with Frank Gaffey and the Center for Security Policy, and what a great day. You know, I started out today at 8 o'clock in the morning. How many of you were here when I started out at... See, you guys are the real patriots, because you stayed, too. Wow, what a day, huh? What a day. And I'm going to keep my remarks very brief, because I'm not running for president. Although I was in New Hampshire this week, Tuesday night, speaking at a dinner, uh, with your next speaker, who is going to potentially be running for president as well. And, you know, I also know that I'm kind of the guy standing between you and that last pivotal speaker before you get to go home as well. And you guys have been here a long time. You guys should give yourselves an applause for, I mean, staying here as long as you have. Congratulations. When I started out at 8 o'clock this morning, I said exceptional times demand exceptional leadership. If you heard speaker after speaker after speaker today, you understand we live in exceptional times, extraordinary times. Is it the EMP, the grid? Is that an issue? Is that something that may keep you up at night? Is it our porous border, borders and not knowing who's in this country? And what you saw in Garland, Texas, could that keep you up at night? You know, is it this ISIS? Is it a nuclear Iran? I mean, what is it the hollowing of our military? What is it that could keep you up at night? You see, extraordinary times demand extraordinary leadership. And you've heard a lot of that today. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about leadership. And not leadership just in Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania Avenue, and K Street, but I want to talk about leadership on your street and in your home. You see, I get asked all the time, are leaders born or are they developed? I say it's yes and. Leaders are born, but yeah, leaders are developed as well. But what I can tell you this is that leadership, when it is needed, when it is required, it is not optional for anybody not to be a leader. And you're required, first and foremost, to be a leader of yourselves. And so as we live in these extraordinary times, with extraordinary leadership that is needed, I urge you to be a leader. I urge you to engage. I urge you to make a difference. And let me tell you where I learned this. My dad graduated from high school at age 74. And he's not a slow learner. He was 74, I was 37, any way you do the math, even, well, maybe not Common Core, but any other way you do the math, I'm half as old as my dad, 37, he's 74. And I'm attending his high school graduation, Sheldon High School. And I'm in a gym for the high school graduation, it's a typical high school graduation, it is packed wall to wall. And the high school graduates come down the aisle, two by two by two, with parents standing on their chairs in the aisles, getting that, that best picture they can to the graduation march of these high school graduates, about 140 of them. Then the graduation march stopped, and my dad and 11 of his World War II peers came into the graduation march full cap, gown, and tassel, one by one by one, 
to a thunderous standing ovation. And to a gentleman, they had tears running down their cheeks. And I'll never forget when the high school principal said, I present to you the class of 2000. And again, another thunderous standing ovation. And after that graduation ceremony, we threw my dad a graduation party because that's what you do for high school graduates. You throw them a party. Matter of fact, we even gave him a gift, and the gift was a watch because that's what you do for high school graduates. You give them a watch to commence time. My dad was a 21st century graduate. He wanted a car, uh, not, not a watch. <laughs> and after the graduation party, I said to my dad, I said, Dad, and my dad was one of those guys who didn't like to talk about the war. And it was in the high school program of, for his graduation where I'm reading it. It said, John Vanderplatz, United States Navy. I knew that much. Then it said, John Vanderplatz was trained in amphibious landings. I didn't know that. It said, John Vanderplatz participated in the invasion of Iwo Jima. I had no idea. After his graduation ceremony, I said, Dad, I want you, I mean, I was, I'm so proud of you, but I want you to commit to something. I want you to sit down with me for a no holds bar interview about the war. Videotaped. Because your kids don't know, your grandkids don't know, your great grandkids don't know, future generations don't know, but we need to know that freedom isn't free. And we did a three-hour interview about two years after that. It was a very moving and emotional interview. But what came out of that was this. Bob, they tell us that the World War II generation is the greatest generation. He said all it was is providing leadership. And what leadership is, the essence of leadership, is putting the cause above yourself and standing in the gap when your leadership is needed. He said, and that's what we did. We put the cause above ourselves, and we stood in the gap when our leadership was needed and required. But then he also said this. He says, don't let it ever be said that the greatest generation who lived once is now dead and buried. He said, because every generation has the opportunity to be a great generation. And what you need to do to be a great generation is take the, the information that was given to you today, understand that we live in extraordinary times, and thankful for Frank and his team for the leadership, thankful for these, these guys who want to be national leaders, maybe president, for their type of leadership, but you need to narrow it down to you. We need you to identify yourself that here I am. Isaiah 6 moment, here I am, send me. And then you need to allow us to communicate with you. And then you need to allow us to organize you and to mobilize you so that we can stand in the gap together to make a difference. Because I don't believe God is done with this country yet. I don't believe God is done with our churches yet. I don't believe God is done with our homes yet. But we need to lead if we're going to realize what I believe he's intended for this country. <laughs> this past fall, I had the opportunity to go to Poland. And I went to Poland, we visited Auschwitz and Birkenau, the Holocaust. Six million eliminated. And one of the haunting statements that was said to me on that trip was with everybody knowing what was going on, why didn't somebody do something? Why didn't somebody do something? Why didn't somebody put the cause above themselves? Why didn't somebody stand in the gap? And we learn of a guy like Bonhoeffer who says, not to speak is to speak, not to act is to act. So what I want you to do today before you leave here is ask yourself, are you a leader? 
Are you a leader? And if you are a leader, I'd say sign up at our website or Frank's website or whatever it is, but identify yourself as a leader. Hold yourself accountable. Get into the game. Stand in the gap. Mobilize your network. But let's take this country back one by one by one and bring it back to its foundations, back to its moral pillars, its founding. And when we do that, I believe our best days are ahead of us. So join me in being a leader. Thank you for persevering through the day.